Then this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome again to our Abundant Living series. My name is Professor Stephen Ade, your brother in the Lord, sharing a few thoughts with you. We started our series on Abundant Living. We looked at the fact that the foundation of living abundantly is Christ, who said that I came that they may have life and have it abundantly all to the full. We also look at the fact that if you are going to have an abundant living or abundant life, you should not only be anchored to Jesus Christ, but you should also know who you are in Christ. Not the pride of self-exaltation, but not also the self-disbasement of many people who lack self-esteem. We are made in the image of God. What a wonderful position. And even though our status was marred by sin, Christ died for us and redeemed us. So we can say that we are fearfully and wonderfully made by God. Having the right thought about who you are is necessary for abundant living. We also noted that God has provided in his, through his Holy Spirit all the resources that we need to live abundantly. And we are not talking about only wealth or material things, though it is part of it. The physical and the material are needed. There's a modicum of material resources you need in order to live and enjoy life. But in the Holy Spirit, we have abundant resource, spiritual resources. We have abundant resources to have the right relationship with our neighbors, so that we can love God and love our neighbor as ourselves. And we have inward peace, for we have peace with God through Christ Jesus. God shares his Holy Spirit in our hearts so that we may have abundant living. Because to live abundantly, we need abundant resources. Today, I want to come with a very important aspect. So far, somebody will say, well, it seems abundant living is a religious halubalu, you know, living on the, in the skies, talking about, you know, being anchored in Jesus Christ, knowing that you are made in the image of God, having the Holy Spirit. Yes, we are spirit, soul, and body. And unless our spirit is linked to God, we are going to be famished spiritually. And even if we gain the whole world, as Jesus puts it, it will not profit us. However, we have our part to play in abundant living. And that is where we are going to start from today. The disciplines of those who live abundantly. Someone has said, and rightly so, that in Christianity, we live our life as if it all depends on God. That is grace. At the same time, we live our life as if it all depends on us. These are the disciplines of an abundant life that God wants us to enjoy. So we'll be looking at the disciplines of abundant living our side, what we need in order to realize the full potential of what God has in store for us. I like these days they cut it short SOPs, standard operating procedures. In Christian life, there are also standard Christian operating procedures. If we are to enjoy abundant life. Let me give some illustrations as we go along. If, for example, you are physically unwell and you don't see to your health, you are not going to enjoy abundant life. I haven't seen anybody with a toothache 
going about shouting, praise the Lord, you know, I'm such a happy person with my toothache. Again, if you don't have money just to meet your basic needs of food, clothing, and shelter, and look after your family, you may be the most holy person, but I tell you that the very soon it catch up with you. Anyway, you cannot fast more than 40 days. So you need, in the same way in the spiritual realm, if you live in sin and break fellowship with God, if you are truly born again believer, you will live such a miserable inwardly that you cannot, and all other people would see that you are not going to enjoy life. So there are certain disciplines on our side that we must go through in order to live abundantly. And I will give an overview of the disciplines of those who live abundantly. And I'm trusting that as we go through them in the subsequent weeks, we will be able to enjoy the fullness of what God has for us. As you remember, it is we live as if it all depends on God. And yet we live as if it all depends on us. It's the two sides of the pendulum. God in his grace made us. When we sin in Christ, he saved us. He's given us his Holy Spirit to be the source of the resources we need to live abundantly. And he has shown us that we need self-esteem in order for us a balanced view about ourselves, not that one of pride and egotism or self-depreciation, but living as the child of God. That is God's side. And we get it from his word and we are strengthened. But we are looking at the other side of the disciplines of righteous persons who live abundantly. We will be looking over the next few weeks how, what are the disciplines, the spiritual disciplines of those who live abundantly. We will look at the social disciplines of those who live abundantly. We will look at the physical disciplines of those who live abundantly. And we will be looking at the material and the financial disciplines to, for those who live abundantly. What I will be doing for the rest of my time today is to explain or give an overview of the type of disciplines that we have to un undergo, discipline ourselves to, in order to live abundantly. And then we will take them one by one over the subsequent weeks. So I will give an overview of the disciplines of those who live abundantly and end up by sharing with you two things, one or two things that bring them all together. And then we will be ready in the subsequent weeks to, lay, to look at how to follow the disciplines in each of the realms we will identify. But before we go on further, why, if God has done it all for us, why the necessity of going through some rigors and disciplines? Let me tell you, because those are also part of God's revelation. For example, God created the world physically with say gravity. It's for our good. If there was no gravity, I and you, as soon as we jump, we should be going on and on to the sky. <laughs> we jump and come down. Why? Because the gravity will bring us down unless, of course, we have changed the laws of what the, the scientists call thermodynamics, what they do in order to counteract the normal force of gravity that allows planes to go opposite the gravity. 
But that is not what human beings were made for. And therefore, if you don't discipline yourself to respect the law of gravity, and therefore you think you are spiritual, you go and stand on the top of a, a building and jump down. You will, you will expedite your going to heaven if you are a Christian and to hell if you are uh, not a Christian. So it's important that even when God has provided for us the resources that we need to live, the disciplines that un unlocks those ones must be followed. Therefore, let me quickly share as way of highlights some of the areas we'll be looking at, the cluster of disciplines that we need in order to live abundantly. Number one, we need spiritual disciplines. I will illustrate with this. For example, if you are born again believer, in the sense that you have trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will not spiritually prosper, neither even materially in the right sense, unless you follow Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, where God says that his word, this law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, and you shall be careful to do all that is written in it, then your way will be prosperous and you have good success. What he's saying is this, God has made provisions for us for spiritually to abound, but it requires our meditating on his word day and night. Do you do so? Or you think that somehow if you fast for 40 days, you become spiritual. No, you don't. You become 40, 40 days hungry. But if you fast, but you are because you are walking with God and the crisis required fasting, fair enough. But daily, you are to read God's word in the morning and the evening, be obedient to it. And he says then you will have prosperity spiritual as well as material. So you need certain spiritual disciplines in order to enjoy abundant living. Number two, also social disciplines. The Bible says, summarizing the two laws, uh, all the laws into two, love God, and love your neighbor as yourself. It is inbuilt in us that if we love our neighbors, we live abundantly. Hallelujah. If you seek the welfare of the next person to you, your spouse, your children, your co-workers, to love here is not romantic sexual love. It is seeking the welfare of the other person. The theologians will say agape love. I remember when I was head of the United Nations in South Africa, my administrative assistant, uh, my administrative officer, he was an assistant to me, that's a substantive position. The administrator is, uh, was the second in command de facto to me. And uh, one day he, she invited me to her house for lunch because it was not a family station so all of us didn't have our family there and i went to the washroom and there was a, a certain label there love your neighbor but don't be caught <laughs> making a fan of such a wonderful passage i know when the bible there is a social inviolable principle that if you seek the welfare of others you as you will do for yourself your relationship with them will improve and everyone will live abundantly so there are certain social disciplines which we'll be looking at and ordained by god intrinsic in our how we were made and when we follow them we would indeed enjoy a 
abundant life. The disciplines of a godly person who live abundantly requires some social disciplines. Again, we will be talking about physical disciplines. I don't know why some people are born deformed or genetic orientation to certain type of illnesses, diabetes, and the rest. But even then, when they follow certain physical regimes, they slow it down. And those who are not that dispo uh, disposed enjoy life better. For example, it has been found that if you walk about 30 minutes a day, about four times a week, your health is generally better and you are likely to live longer. What a simple way. Again, there are certain things that we need disciplines that we need to go through. For example, every now and then, you know, I like blessing my soul with a little Coke here, a little cake there, and, you know, occasionally. But fun. You cannot be eating cake and drinking Coke almost every day and expect to live long or have a good health. There are certain disciplines, physical disciplines, you have to go through in order to realize your full potential that God has given you to live abundantly. There are economic and financial disciplines. Many people have no business of being poor. Do you hear me? Many people have no business of being poor. You meet people who are not physically handicapped. And some, I saw a, a film of someone who was born without either hand. And wonderful, it was shown to at a, a church I was speaking with Elder uh, Sao Japon known as, uh, uh, popularly known as Zoom Lion. And this child who was born without hands at all, at all, has managed to grow up to be one of the leading engineers you can find anywhere in the world. So even a handicapped person is not necessarily an excuse for not doing your utmost for his highest. But generally, Yes, there are certain genetic dispositions, but we know that certain physical disciplines will slow down some illnesses, will eliminate some, and generally those who do follow some physical disciplines live longer. In the same way, those who follow economic and financial disciplines tend to be rich. When we come to the financial disciplines, one of the things, contributions I made a long time ago in my book, 12 Keys to Financial Success, is that if you earn an income and you discipline yourself to live within 80% of it, invest 10 consistently in a good financial vehicle and give minimum of 10% towards the needs of others and the work of God, you are likely to not only live better, but to end up rich. 101080 principle is what I introduced in that book. The middle 10 has to do with savings and investment. And if you're a Christian out there, don't let anybody tell you that the tight is the seed. It is not. The tight is to support kingdom business. The seed that God promised to be, uh, bless is the work of your hand, the next savings and investments, and those are the ones, and if you pay your tithe and you don't save and invest, you are likely to be a poor tighter, and many of them are. So we will look at economic and financial disciplines so that we can realize abundant living. Again, when we have looked at the individual's ones, I will also share how to put it all together. Being purpose-driven person with all the areas of our life disciplines being worked at together. And we'll be looking at having a vision 
having been purpose-driven, goal-directed, and value-based Christian living. Our time is up, but I'm so glad and so excited about the disciplines of those who live abundantly. Do you have the, the discipline almost every area in their life, including their appetites, bringing their instincts under control so that they will realize their full potential. Spiritual disciplines we will be looking at, social disciplines, we will be looking at physical disciplines, we will be looking at economic and financial disciplines, and we will bring them all together in the purpose-driven life. It's going to be exciting, and I want to meet you next week as we continue with the disciplines of those who live abundantly. Most likely, I will share the values that must cut across all these disciplines so that they are not just mechanical. You don't just save and invest, but you do so with genuinely earned money, with integrity and the type and the rest. So I will meet you next week. It is your brother, Stephen Adair. And thank you for listening to Z101.9. You will also meet and meet and meet and meet on YouTube. God bless you and may you have a wonderful weekend and a prosperous week ahead of us. Shalom and may the Lord be with you. <laughs>